Alrighty, <clears throat> so pretty straightforward. I have a mouse I want to build. Um, we'll see how this goes. I need to start messing with shit, so bear with me. First of all, we're gonna move that kind of farther away because <clears throat> it doesn't really need to be right there. And ah, let's figure out how I'm gonna place this guy. So. <clears throat> Is he gonna freak out? Might just freak out on me. That's not helpful at all. Camera, come back. Hello. There we go. good sense of my build space Let's see I can move this a little closer so that sounds a little less a hundred million miles away let's see <clears throat> organization is important got the instructions <clears throat> up on my main computer here So we've got the main 3D printed shell here. Oh, I should check my focus. That would be smart. That's probably why I didn't do it. Uh, let me see here. First of all, why don't you come out like this? My brain's like struggling to comprehend. There we go. All right, so let's get this guy in focus. Okay, let's go a little farther in, I think. That looks about good like that. Okay. Is it perfect? God, no. Is it close enough? Yeah, okay. Super. So, let's see here. Okay. So, organize this in a way that makes my brain work. Okay. So yeah, so we've got the main 3D printed shell here. Um, as you can see, uh, very similar in shape <coughs> to my existing mouse, uh, which is, wow, that camera, the light is blowing it out. Um, very much the same shape um, from the uh, Ultra Custom here, um, which again, I do love. I think uh, the shape works really well for me. I've tried that as well as uh, this guy here which is another Piranha Mods mouse, um, which I do really like, but I just found that I was doing slightly better with this mouse with this symmetrical grip style. So um, this is what, like I had the board, um, the 703 board, which I just wasn't using for anything. Like it was just sitting in a backpack, basically never being used. Um, so I bought the shell for it and I did, uh, I don't know if you can, you can probably catch an angle here. There we go, you see the, the red in there are the KL uh, GM 4.0s, uh, these guys here. Very clicky, very clicky. I really like the way they feel and sound. So, let's see, get it by the mic, hang on. Just very, very tactile, very nice. Um, and then this whole mouse just like weighs nothing. Um, I'm probably shooting myself in the foot a little bit doing using these uh, ceramic uh, skates because they're actually quite heavy. Um, but I mean, hey, if I have an ultralight mouse, I can afford to have some nice skates. And these things just 
absolutely glide along uh, mats. So I've done that on pretty much all my mice. I have um, I have a fresh set here for uh, my new guy as well because I don't want to take skates off for something else. But yeah, this is kind of the experiment to see if it was really going to work for me, if I really liked the quality of it, you know, the feel of it. And I just say, Piranha Mods, you did a freaking fantastic job. It's solid as a rock. <coughs> Excuse me. Solid as a rock given how... Um, you know, I mean, look at it. You can you can see through most of it. It's you know, it's there's nothing, absolutely nothing to it, and yet uh, feels solid. Um, the the paint gives you a nice nice good grip. Um, I just love it. I was really thrilled with it as a device. Um, used it as my main for quite a while, but ended up falling back to this guy just for the the grip shape. Just just worked for me a little better. Um, did the same thing with this guy so far as uh, you know, modding the various switches and whatnot. So this guy, you can see very clearly the. Uh, the side buttons and the two um, primary uh, left and right are um, are modded as well. Um, I was tempted to mod the encoder on this guy, but I actually found that it, it actually feels pretty good as is. So I don't think I'll touch that. This guy, on the other hand, is um, just uses the stock encoder, and it is just not very nice. So one of the future things I want to do is actually take this mouse back apart and uh, do a replacement encoder. So that might be something I do um, at a later date. Um, but yeah, you know, just kind of a fun hobbyist thing to figure out what you like what you don't like um i'm like i said i'm learning that this kind of symmetrical s2 style shape um really really works for me <coughs> so i just want to do uh, a custom one just to, to really drop that last uh, few you know nanograms or whatever whatever how much it weighs um i don't think the the ultra opponent or the ultra custom doesn't weigh a huge amount it's a very light mouse um but i mean obviously you can see there's pretty substantial difference in the amount of material that, um, you know, compared to this empty shell versus this guy. So, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm going with this. So let's see, skates are step the last. So we'll put all that over there. What we've got here is, this is, I think just the zip ties for the battery. Let's see. <clears throat> there's anything else in here oh stock skates so yeah they give you um they come with these uh, ptfe skates um they're fine they're perfectly fine um i just know that i like the other skate style uh better myself so i'm gonna you know stick with what's been working for me let's see so here we go just the rest of the pieces a little bit of adhesive stuck on this plastic bag <clears throat> let's put that over there as well There we go. So this is the rest of it. So we've got the uh, stock battery connector. I wonder if that's a spare actually come to think of it because I think it comes with one maybe. My wife's computer is still on, and I don't know what she has on in the background, but it's literally just periodic screaming, but quietly through a headphone that's been left on a desk. So I'm just seeing her, I'm just hearing in the background, ah, ah, but like full-throated, very strange. Um, so yeah, the, the solution that they give you for battery charging are these little magnetic <coughs> micro dudes. Let's see. So you get the little, um, Magnetic ring, it turns out. It's these little micro connectors here. So micro USB goes into the micro USB on the battery, and then you just get this nice little uh, quick connect uh, dealy. That's why it's got a, that kind of hole in the top. So, you know, time to charge. You know, you're not playing and charging, but realistically, these batteries are gonna last more than long enough. If you if you find you're out of batteries mid game, you're uh, really just need to learn to pay attention. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Let's see, crack open the board. So there are a few different ways that you can get a hold of these boards. Um, pretty straightforward. You can either um, you know, buy a G305 uh, light speed, so the wireless G305, um, and mod them yourself and use one of those. Those will work perfectly fine. I didn't have one. Um, I didn't want to add to the landfill, uh, really. So I bought a pre-modded um, recycled ones. So they take non-working ones, they fix them, and then they mod them per your specifications. So this one has a uh, aftermarket encoder, 
Um, I, you're never gonna be able to read that, I don't think, but that is a Kale um, Switch, which is aftermarket. Again, kind of the same, it's the same brand, just <coughs> slightly different style. I think these by default uh, come with, uh, what are these, Omrons? So it's gonna be something like this. Um, they're prone to failure and they don't feel fantastic. They're not the worst, but they're not, you know, they're not top tier either. So let's see here we get that guy. Just gonna put him on a bag. Here's the rest of the bits and pieces, and here's where more of the modding uh, comes into play. Let's put that over there. So let's see what we got here. Tiny, tiny ass screws. I think the first thing I'll do is some organization to make sure I don't I'm not losing the rest of those guys. Like that guy, for instance. So let's see. Set that aside, set that aside. Just make sure there's no uh, screws holding on anywhere that they shouldn't. Looks like we're good. We've got this little guy here, which I happen to know goes on here. Oh, so one of the things I did too is, we got a little dusty in there. Uh, bought a um, 3D printed uh, scroll wheel. So um, just slightly different style. The uh, the stock one on the 305 is um, kind of like a straightened out version of this guy here. Just this sort of very basic rubberized, um, you know, really small notches. Um, this guy, uh, when I looked at the photos, reminded me a lot of the scroll wheel on this guy, um, which is, of course is blown out because I have the lights turned up all the way, but um, you know, very subtle, uh, I don't know what you call it, knurling or whatnot, but it just kind of reminded me of this. So I was like, ah, okay, for the, I forget what it was, like 16 bucks. I think yeah, I'll go for that because I just don't like the way the stock one looks or feels. So let's see, I want to organize my screws first and foremost. So let's. It's all part of the process. Get all your friggin' screws. So them, them long boys. What else we got? So small boy. Small boy, small boy, small boy, small boy. Ooh, special retention boy for the uh, thumb buttons here, which I do believe I have to do some bending. Let's see. So obviously these these mice are well made and they're pretty resilient, but I'm not gonna manhandle them too much. I don't want to be snapping off any of the uh, little retaining brackets or whatnot because obviously this is not your stock G305, so they needed to uh, do some very specific positioning of things to make sure that stuff lands the way it should, so that you know the thumb mouse button oops out of frame sorry so that the thumb mouse buttons go into go in the right way you know they have to have special framing to make sure that things. Uh, align properly. I don't even know if I'm putting that in correctly. I'm just kind of smashing in there. Some bending need to be done, but yeah, I'm going to be fairly careful with things because as uh, as robust as they are, I don't want to tempt fate and uh, be responsible for fucking gorilla stomping my brand new mouse here. So let's see. These are the ones with the thicker top. These are the ones with the thinner tops. We've got our special retention boy. I'll just smack these in here so they don't go running off on me. And gently place that over there. Okay. So then we've got the switches for the side buttons. So once again, uh, modded KLGM 4.0s. Uh, you know, you can have you can argue till you're blue in the face as to what the best switch is. Um, I'm very much of the mindset of the best switch uh, is the switch that you like the most. And I happen to think these not only look cool, um, but feel very nice and have a very nice sound to them so that's what i went with for my my uh build um you know you make your own decisions about shit you don't need people telling you what the greatest thing in the world is it's all just opinion try to form your own whenever possible so all right so now to the build guide remember where my actual mouse is actually you know what? i'll leave this guy over here i'm just gonna turn you on I have a handful of mice, might as well use a handful of mice. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Yes, you buy it here. <coughs> Spoiler alerts, I kind of already bought it. So let's go to links, I want to say. Get specific notifications. Now, where is mod kits? I don't remember where this was. I thought I pre-downloaded it, but of course I did not. So it doesn't help that I have had a splitting headache for most of the day. 
If it were up to me, I would not be streaming, but I also really, really am dying to try this mouse and I'm very excited. So the pain and discomfort is being overridden by the uh, excitement. Let's see, shipping, yep, 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 where is, okay, here we go. For assembly, oh, did they email it to me? Install manual for mouse mod kits, there we go. Let me check my email for that uh, guide as well. I'm sure they sent it to me. They've been really good at communication, so. Yep, here is the, yeah, this is the full instructions. Yep, 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 yep. <coughs> Sweet. Okay. Okay. Yes, I see. Yes. Yeah, this even looks like my mouse or yours makes no difference. Okay. Oh, I, did, I just noticed too, you've got that really nice, uh, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, right at the top there, S2. Once the battery's in, you'll be able to read that through the uh, the top. Kind of, I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up on your side, but uh, I don't know, just fun little details like that when something's custom made. I was gonna kick at that. Like, why, why take the time? Like, it doesn't matter. Most people aren't gonna notice that, but uh, there you go. little. Well, S2 on the battery frame there. Love shit like that. Makes me smile. All right, tools required. Heat gun. Oh, well. <laughs> mm. Four screw types. Left, right, switch, PCB, side, and bottom. Okay. Pay attention to the orientation. Well, we will do that. <clears throat> so, orientation is like these. Like these. Very good. Okay. Mouse wheel, insert the mouse wheel and the encoder smell, blah, 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 small string, spring, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm gonna be detailing the specific steps, just making sure my brain's still turned on. Cause it doesn't feel like it is. It feels like it's in the middle of a hard shutdown. Okay, add PCB screws to clip. All right, so we've got two clips here. Now the idea with these clips, as I understand it, is uh, to make these adjustable, uh, which is really cool in my opinion, that they go so far as to actually design an adjustability system. I am a fan. All right, so we're gonna, yep, there's already leads in the bottom, so I can tighten that pretty much just all the way down. Let's go for another. So with a lot of mice, um, it's not uncommon for mice to have adjustable clicks. How you implement that is, you know, depending on the brand. Logitech Razor, I don't think they bother. Uh, this guy here, <coughs> the Ponage Ultra Custom, you missed me disassemble it earlier. One of the things that they give you, oh God, you're never gonna be able to see that because, oh, you can kind of see that here. Here, I bet if I tone down the lighting just a touch. Can I get a shadow on it? Shadow, there we go. Okay, so you can kind of see, <sighs> my brain is not equipped for this right now. Okay, you can kind of see how there's those two pegs up towards the front. What you, I'm not sure if you'll be able to discern in the video or not, is there's actually these really small, um, almost acrylic looking pads, and they give you several of different thicknesses, and you can swap out, um, you can swap those out based on your preference. And uh, obviously how thick you go means a sharper click because there is physically, uh, you know, there's more physical material between the switch and the mouse itself. So the amount of force that you have to depress with, um, you know, there's much less travel. So um, the for obviously the force remains the same because force is constant for the most part. Um, but I'm um, sorry, what I'm saying is travel. So the more material you have, the more like preloaded the switch is. So like for instance, I don't know if this is gonna come through or not, but when I press this switch, ooh, that's a hard angle to hit. There's a bit of travel where my thumb is pushing the plastic of the switch down, but it hasn't actuated. So when you preload that with those little acrylic pads, you can literally make these guys so that it's just a hair trigger where there's like no travel whatsoever. Um, I tried that for a little while, it drove me crazy because I just, it felt broken somehow. Like it felt like the switch was broken. Um, so I found that just a, let me see if I can get an angle on this, just a touch, touch of travel before the click is not, is enough, but you know, 
it's uh it's all dependent on what you personally prefer there's really no wrong answer when it comes to stuff like this unless you like i would like it i would like click of three and a half miles in which case i would say well you i don't think you should have to travel that far to click but let's see Snap in. Again, trying to be gentle with my mouse parts here. I do not want to. There we go. I do not want to Hulk smash, or as I would like to call it, Gorilla Fist, uh, any components here. Um, wow, they really. Talk about like really fine tuning though. I wonder why that's even there. The, those, there's holes in the. Sorry, I'm not good at holding things in camera. There's actually holes in the PCB already that are not drilled they are they look like they're there from the factory and they line up perfectly obviously with uh where the adjustment screws come through that is super interesting i wonder if that's part of the reason why the g503 is uh more commonly used amongst the um piranha mods products i wonder if it's because this pcb has those holes that they were able to be like, oh yeah, we can do uh, we can do some adjustability. Oh boy, I don't like how that feels. I don't wanna break it. Come on, just go in gently, gently. Oh, that just feels, oh. I know these parts are pretty tough, but oh, I just don't wanna break anything. What am I missing here? Interesting. Oh, there might be a little bit of material in there. Let's, uh, there's something in there. Yeah, it looks like I got a little bit of material in there. That's interesting. Okay. Well, it is a custom product. There are going to be problems. It looks like some of the powder coat or whatever they use here may have gotten built up inside that little cranny there. You can actually see kind of some of it right there as well. A little bit of that kind of white powder coat looking stuff. Of course, I say that I'm holding it off camera because I'm an idiot. Um, okay, let's see if that goes on a little better now. I don't want to, I don't want to press off any vital components, obviously. Oh, that still feels a little gummy. Oh, I don't love that. All right, I still just, yeah, I still see a little bit of that powder coat in there. Okay. I apologize for holding this off screen. It's just uh, a little difficult to, unfortunately my my, my uh, webcam, because this is just a webcam, it's not an actual DSLR or anything fancy. Um, my webcam is very fine <laughs> in its focus range, which means it's not a camera person generally, so I don't know. <laughs> Basically it's, um, it doesn't have a wide area to focus across, so. Just want to see you get on there and seat relatively painlessly. There you go. I think you're pretty much in place. Okay. There we go. I think we're pretty much there. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're lining up with all the holes nicely. All right. This is a product. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Place the PCB on the shell. All right. So part of this. Oops. I lost my switch. Hang on. Make sure the switch is oriented. Okay. So now we just got to make sure that our little springy guy here gets seated in correctly. Which is not to say seated incorrectly, but seated in the correct way. Which I actually think means it's gonna have to be a little farther out. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. So now we just need to make sure, there we go, all the pegs and stuff line up. So there's a number of um, little pegs that all feed through different ways. Ooh. Turn around there, buddy, didn't you? Hmm. That doesn't seem like we're in there all the way. Just making sure the buttons pointed the right way. A little better. Okay. Can I hold this down? There we go. I can actually hit the switch in the bottom there, so that's good. Again, I apologize for holding it off screen. I just, um, my eyesight isn't fantastic, and this is like a good foot away from my face. I'm assuming you don't want to stare at the top of my head, so I'm just trying to do things. Actually, I'm going to artificially move myself forward by turning the mic over here. It kind of forced me to move forward a bit. Okay, place BCP. Make sure on off. Add five PCB screws. All right. Let's do that then. PCBs are the big boys. Right. Let's start from the back. I'll work my way forward. Now, with electronics, uh, do not torque down your screws because it's all delicate and you don't need it to be in there. You know, this isn't brakes on a car. If the screw's loose, you're not going to die. So why risk uh, punching a hole in something you don't want to? So let's see, this will be number four. Where is number five? Two, three, four. Oh, it's on the other side. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just not highlighted. So most of these guys have these little uh, white circles around them. You kind of see that one right there. Where's center anyway? Oh, God, where am I? What am I? Uh, here we go. So you can see they have these little circles around them. So aim for those. And then there's one oddball out on the other side, which you can see the hole for there. Um, and has no circle. Yeah, yeah, tighten it to you. Basically, uh, yeah, turn it till it cracks and then go a quarter turn back. I mean, that's one method of doing it, but um, I personally go for the uh, just stop when it sounds expensive. No, don't do that, that's stupid. <sighs> Whatever this is here is bugging me. I'm not OCD, you're OCD. There we go. It's that little bit, of, I'm sure you cannot see that on the stream, a little bit of like, discolored dust I think left over from the powder coat because I believe if I remember my my uh, reading correctly this is a form of automotive powder coat that's just supposed to be very very uh, resilient um, yeah, you can see like even the the standoffs where the screws screw in uh, there is just not much material there so if you're gonna torque these suckers down uh, you're gonna hear, start hearing some cracks and then you're really gonna be unhappy when you can like you know squeeze your mouse and have it shift on you so don't squeeze it till it cracks. Bad idea. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Add five PCBs. Stop tightening them once the screw heads touch the PCB. And then get your torque wrench. Set it to 40 foot pounds. Yeah, can you imagine torque wrenching down to something like this guy? <laughs> it's like he is, how many adapters? Like a foot of adapters just to get to, you know, this size from a torque wrench. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. Bend the side buttons. I mean, they're kind of already bent. <laughs> Do I have to? I don't like bending things. It makes my pee pee hurt. Um, you know, honestly, looking at this, they either already bent it for me or it's pretty damn close. So I'm just gonna do a test fit and see how it feels. Because if I can avoid bending things, um, I will generally avoid bending things. So let's see if we do this and then slip the cover on. I'm not going to tighten anything down just yet. I'm just going to see how things are fitting. If things are fitting, can things fit? Can my idiot brain get things to fit? 
Gee, uh, <clears throat> how do you, what are you, what are you made of? What are you? Okay, there we go. Nope, no, because there's one on the other side. How the fuck do you put this in? Do you just have to, like, yeet slam it? Is it this the Titan way? Hello? If it's eyeball wise, what can I say? I'm not a precision machine. Um, if it's the eyeballs, side button screws in their slot PCB. All right, got stuck together. Whatever. All right. So we're just locking in these side buttons. So the photo it actually shows them kind of um, needing to. Uh, be at an angle. It looks like these guys are pretty much stock location, which is also kind of supports the theory of, I don't really need to bend them. I can probably just leave them about where they are. And looking at it visually, you know, you can see, uh, here, I'm gonna put my hand behind it so you get some contrast here. You can see how far it sits out from the base of the shell. And then looking at this guy as well, from a similar angle, similar angle, angle, similar angle similar there we go you can kind of see that the base tapers in uh quite a bit so all right you've got a good amount of taper inwards and then the buttons sit I'm trying to find a good angle on this sorry my brain's not equipped for this there we go now the other way right side up for the viewers there we go you can see the buttons kind of sit out a bit right from the inside here where it curves in so that kind of supports my theory that uh, the stock location here of just being out a little bit from uh, the base is probably close enough that it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm having a hard time fitting this in here because I don't know know what the magic is here. There's some stuff that sits out farther than some other stuff and I don't want to scratch off all the coating. So I'm not gonna mess with it too much right now. Instead, I'm just going to dream of how nice this will be when it's done. Um, side buttons are in since we bent the side buttons. Well, we didn't. Spoiler alert. But um, we should be able to get this guy right in as well. So this guy looks like he just slots right in there. All right. So uh, they give you these little um, pretty clear slots for you to get the PCB portion into. Um, real straightforward. Just in it goes. Uh, just make sure you've got enough for your wire, which we do. That's a decent amount of travel. That might be, that's probably why they want you to to bend that. So what I'm looking at now is uh, you can see this amount of pushing here is just me tapping the plastic of the button housing. And I like it to kind of just sit right up against and actuate. So I think I will pull this out and bend it. I'd rather take it, take it in and out multiple times than bend it once and overbend it or underbend it or break it or snap it or do something stupid. I've uh, <laughs> so when modding this mouse, the side buttons, I um uh, ripped one of the uh, solder pads off of the board so the buttons stopped working. And the guy who's in chat now, who is a legend, um, actually helped me uh, fix it by adding a couple wires. Um, so basically, instead of using the PCB. To carry the signal we just he just instructed me on how to figure out where to put the wires because uh, he has a much larger brain with more wrinkles than i do um and actually uh the company um i contacted the company before i contacted him about the issue and they're like oh well we don't send out replacement parts but um we have one here and we'll totally send it to you <laughs> so they're, they're kind of legends in that regard um, I don't think it's a service they normally offer. I think it was literally just like they, for whatever reason, they had easy access to that exact, like this, this, it was essentially this piece here, like it was just this little daughter PCB with switches on it. So they sent me a um, brand new one and I was like, well, I'm just going to try again and see if I don't break it. And I didn't break it. So I did end up swapping in it. So it's, it's proper now. It doesn't have the extra wires, but um, I just thought that was like just one of those customer service things where it's like, yeah, we don't normally do this, but we'll do it because we can. Like, I, I have no doubt that, like, they, they probably can't go out of their way for everyone, sure. They probably don't have a lot of, you know, they're a smaller company. They probably don't have a lot of spare parts kicking around like that. Um, but I did appreciate that rather than just telling me to, to full on stuff it, they did actually find a way. Um, and, you know, I had to pay for it. It's fine. I'm, it's not a warranty thing. I screwed it up. I'm fine to pay for my mistakes. 
Um, but it was just nice that they were willing to even, you know, they could have very easily just been like, yep, nope, bye, sorry, like sucks to be you, get stuffed. Um, but they didn't, they found a way to make it work and I, I, I appreciate that. So let's see, yeah, so this is what I was talking about. Definitely overbent it because I'm actually actuating it by pulling it away. So, but bending out's a little easier. We don't have to take it out. So actually I could bend it in place because there's nothing in the way. Let me give it a bit of a <coughs> bend inward. Because once it's in the frame, uh, fully assembled, it will not uh, be bending out again on its own. So let's see, just make sure that's in there all the way. So again, that, so this one looks pretty good. Yep, that one looks pretty good. This guy's a little, there we go. Oh, see, so that's very much a hair trigger. I don't know if you can see how little I don't know how well that clicks coming through, but I'm barely even like nudging it. There we go, that feels better. So I want it to be pretty sensitive. What I'm trying to see, which is never gonna come through in the camera, so I apologize, but what I'm trying to see is when I'm manually lifting the switch, the button away, and I just let it rest, is it depressing any part of the switch on its own? I'd like that to be a no, which right now it is a little bit, so I'm gonna bend it out a bit more. So I'm trying to make it that when I, when there's no pressure on it, it's just barely touching the switch, but not starting to press the button at all. That's that one's about perfect like that. Yeah. Okay. I actually like that. That feels good. Um, what I, so what I use these for is I use the farther one back as a reload. The front one I was using for class ability. Um, I might use that for charged melee in the future once they add in the uh, uh, specific button for that. Um, but I generally like to just swing my thumb up and flick the reload button. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Okay, I like how that's feeling. Ah, uh, let's see. Cut off the le cut cut. <gasps> No, we'll be fine. That's why we have flush cutters. I'm just gonna plug this in because it's right here and I will probably forget. There you go. There, we've got two of our four main buttons plugged in. All right, do I, do I actually need to do this? God, which one's which? They both say B01. Oh, here we go, right. Right button, okay. So. That actually makes sense to me because it looks like the header is right there, so the shorter one would be the one closer. So these cuts must surely be. <laughs> I do wonder if I actually need to cut those. If you're doing the 303 wireless mod. Oh, if you are doing the 303 wireless mod. All right, we are not. We have the 305, so we should be good there. It looks like these guys just rest here. I'm very curious to see how the uh, the adjustment works. Oh, and I think I just figured it out. All oh, right, because when you okay, so the way the adjustment works, I'm learning now. So you've got these screws in here, and uh, when you loosen them, loosen or technically loosen them, they're going to retract down. And what that's going to do on the inside here find an angle on it you see these oh, this is my brain is not built for this you see these little tabs here these will actually catch underneath the screw so as you tighten the screw it's going to pull the button down so you're again it's pre-tensioning it's just you want to get as or you want to get how you like how you like to feel best but that's how they do the adjustment I was very curious about that very interesting that they have all the pass-throughs and stuff to just be able to do that very cool. Um, I might still need to cut these looking at the photo, but I might not. So we're gonna we're gonna see. Uh, I think I can just smack these right into place. Four PCB screws. Who'd da thunk it? How did we get here? We've gone too far. Um, okay, 
Yeah, it's gonna be very hard to see in this light, so I apologize. I know I've got it pulled a little too far forward. But again, between the headache and everything else, uh, there we go. It's difficult for me to focus on things that aren't that far away. I'm not that old. I don't need to pull it three feet away from my face to be able to focus on it. There we go. Let's get that snug. So again, we're not, you know, this is a form of plastic, essentially. If you over tighten it, you're going to strip it. And then the thing that you wanted just that little bit tighter is going to be loose for the rest of your friggin' life because you got too aggressive with your tightening. So don't do that. Let's see. I'm trying to get this more focused here. This is going to be very much a learning experience for me with how the hell do I keep things in frame? I'm so used to just like moving my shit around everywhere based on whatever I happen to be doing. Not used to having to keep things in view or like on the side of the viewer, which is technically the other side of me, which is also uh, a bit jarring. Let's see, let's just make sure. Yep, so I'm just making sure they're flush with the little uh, boards here because I don't want them um, rest, you know, clicking down and clicking, uh, like actually resting further in. So we'll go ahead and click this guy in as well. I'm guessing he's gonna wanna rest somewhere off to the side like that. Definitely on the other side of the scroll wheel. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh this guy popped out of it, didn't he? Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I skipped a step because, you know, moon brain. Uh, this little guy, so this guy has this extra little tab on it. I don't know how well that's gonna come through again on the camera. You can kind of see there. So screw with the tab on it. Screw with the tab, because here, and just keeps the PCB from backing off of its little mount there. Which, wow, that thread's a while. Okay, there we go. Okay, still like how that feels. I do like the scroll, how it turned out. I wasn't sure because I've never, ever um, had an aftermarket scroll wheel before, but um, these guys actually feel very similar in their scrolling, which is cool. Let's see, let's connect the thing. Add the battery springs. All right, so we're gonna set this aside. We have sprongs. Very nice of them to give you a uh, second connector for the battery. My understanding is that the battery connector is a pretty common point of failure. So they give you this second set of wires so that you can fix or replace what you need to. Much appreciated for people like me who are dumb and break shit. And actually on the uh, the first mouse I did, I did absolutely break that. Um, I needed to go back and like solder in a slightly different wire and make shit work. So yeah, stupid is a thing that exists in my world. Let's see. So that guy, I'm just trying to figure out the, these are the very, very thin wires, um, like whisper thin, so. I'm trying to be very gentle with them so I don't have to do any resoldering like it did with my first mouse. Uh, let's see. Which my wife is now using and loves. And she didn't think she cared until she had a nice light mouse and then she's like, oh my God, this feels incredible. And now I can't have it ever, ever have it back. It's just hers now. I'm okay with that. Is that right? Oh, it's oriented correctly. Yeah, yeah, because they have this this one towards the back. All right, come on, you fiddly little thing. So here's the problem. I don't want to torque on it too much because it's tiny, thin little wire. But I kind of have to oh, to get it past this little tab here. So what's happening is there's this little, for lack of a better term, there's this little plastic nipple. You can kind of see it back there. And I've got to get this guy around it. But I, again, don't want to torque on it too much because I know how easily these guys can just rip apart. And I don't want to resolder tonight. There we go, okay, I think I got it. There we go. Okay, so that's in there. It's mostly in there. Okay, step two, insertion of the battery. You're going this way. I think that's just a pressure tab. So let's see if we go. I'm just gonna make sure the micro USB plug is oriented to the slot. Hello, can you not move? Like your whole deal is that I need you where you are, not where you decided you want to shift off to. Let's see. 
Okay. So I'll slot that guy in. I can always rotate this once it's oh shit, I forget the spring part. Okay, no, we're we're going in this way. Alright. Uh they do rotate um once they're in, so I know I know I can move things around and like get it in position, but I just wanted to start with it at least relatively in the right place. Alright, that looks to be making contact. Okay. Yep, there we go. Okay, so that's good. So that's there. And part of how it's retained as well is the little magnet dude here. Um, Cause as you can see, small slot, large magnet, cannot pass through once thing insert. Oops, oh boy. Of course, magnets are magnetic and do magnetic things. Actually, probably be easier if I just use this guy. There we go. Occasionally my brain activates. All three brain cells start firing. There we go. Okay, so battery in. We didn't push out any of our springs. We are still soldered and connected in all the places that we want to be soldered and connected. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to tune these a little more while I got easy access to them. I am going to pull you back on that. Trying to just kind of close my eyes and figure that they're a little too sensitive. I think they're good. Okay. Twirl zip time. Yeah. This is the part that I remember being an absolute PIA. I'm trying to get this to feed through. Gotcha. Use their advice and use the screwdriver. It's almost like they've done this before and no. There we go. Okay. So let's see. There's a little something somewhere. Where's that? Where? Wow. This one is quite different from mine. Previously, on Dragon Ball Z, there was a, a clear rail that you would feed it through. This one does not seem to have that. I'm just going to put it here. Because the top, so my thought process is, if everything is equal, I'll put it down here. Honestly, looking at this design, I don't think it needs it anywhere. Because you've got uh, these nice 3D printed tabs to kind of hold it in place at the top here. Uh, just try not to rip that cable. Like I said, they're tiny. So you've got this nice, these nice little 3D printed tabs to hold it in there. And then on the far side here, is where you've got the uh, little magnet dealy, which will keep it from falling out. So I'm not entirely convinced that this requires uh, a zip tie at all. Hmm. Yeah, what am I thinking? Do I wanna? It's like that one clearly has rails. It's got kind of an open space to it. Like that one, the picture clearly requires it. No, you know what? I'm living on the edge. I'm living on the edge. This is my custom mouse. I can do what I want. Realistically, where pressure is going to be placed is on the connector, right? But that connector can't pass through the framing that holds the battery in place. And then it's got this nice, like I said, these 3D printed tabs that uh, hold it into place. I'm not worried about that. I'm just gonna leave it like this, you know, between the uh, magnet dealy holding it in and the tabs. I don't think we're gonna have any issues. And I'm not prone to fits of rage where I'm gonna friggin' yeet my mouse across the room, at least not on purpose. So um, yeah, I think we're just gonna leave that as is. Yeah, 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 check the mouse button height. Well, guess what? Yeah, bend it. Nope, that's the old style. Connect the battery, okay. Connecting the battery gently so that we do not rip. All right, so let's see, on. We got an activity light. Ah. Uh, <laughs> where did I put the receiver? Hmm, um, BRB. That might be in the closet.
my god, this is what happens when you have too much in your freaking storage closet. Uh, I didn't want to put this guy in with the rest of the parts because these nice little USB connectors uh, are the perfect size for screws to disappear in them forever. Um, or at least that was my thought process. So, get this guy. Plug it in. And let's see. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Excuse me. There we go. Left click works. Close right click. Right click works. Forward and back work. Fantastic. Okay. Now, again, uh, start in the front. The two holes pins shall need to go under the PCB. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Okay, so these guys. I'm also wondering about this um, scroll wheel because while it is supposed to have been made, oh, maybe I'll turn off the mouse for this part. Well, it's, you know, it's made exactly for this mouse. Uh, it does kind of look like it's a close call for the clearance. So I'm very curious to see how it actually clears. And I think I have to bend this guy out because I just don't see a way for that for that guy there to clear the PCB here. There's no cutouts or anything for it. So I think what I kind of got to do is slot the one side in. Like, yeah, like that. I think I'm gonna have to just kind of pull this away from the PCB here. Ah, gently. And they go under. Come on. I don't want to snap you off. There we go. Okay. Now we're getting there. So those look good. Those look like they'll go underneath. Binding on, I can feel something binding. Is that front part there? Uh, oh, there we go. I'm in the scroll wheel. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. That feels pretty good. Okay, so. I'm not gonna put the feet on yet. I'm gonna screw it down and see how things are feeling. Okay, one, two, three. Is that really all of it? We got three. Guess so. Uh, all right. screws in place these guys here how do I know because they're the right size to fit and be flush and I don't like how you are threading now that does make me mildly concerned Start with the big boys then. Bigums. Bigums, McBoysums, Thickum, McScrews, McLarge. There we go. Yeah, those go in just fine. And again, we're not going to torque them down crazy because plastic is not that resilient. And for those of you wondering, how do you keep a house mouse with so many holes in it clean? And I say, how do you keep yourself clean? You got holes in you and you do fine. Just saying. Or maybe you don't do fine. In which case, go take a shower. Jesus. Don't take your mouse in the shower, though. I don't know of any mice that are waterproof yet. I'm sure someone makes a sweaty, like, waterproof one. This one ain't. did that whole thing off screen because I don't know what I'm doing I'm a moron and if my brain had wrinkles I probably 
go do something else with my life. Putting this all in so I can get a sense of how the mouse feels to see if I need to take it apart to tweak anything like those side buttons, which may or may not require some bending. Again, we will see. Okay. Oop, yep, they do because that is not much actuation happening there. Yep, okay, so I'm gonna have to crack that open to bend that. So when you tighten down the shell like this, you're gonna pull some things in line that were in line before. And uh, you can see front buttons, pretty good. That's a little sensitive, but the back button is not resetting after the minor depress that it's experiencing. Um, there is a not unreasonable end of pre travel. Um, Yeah, it's not too bad. Let's see. There it is there. Just gonna adjust these a little bit just to see how they feel. Okay. Right, so there's a decent amount of travel there right now. So this should be the mo <coughs> the most. Let me get a better angle. Of that. It's the most amount of travel because they're fully the screws are fully tightened at this point. And you will pull the mouse top down by loosening them. So, um, all right. So we're gonna crack this open so that we can fix those side buttons. A little bit of tweaking here and there. Overall, fairly painless though, aside from the pain of my head, which is a headache and also just not being very smart. And I apologize. This is the first time I've ever streamed something like this, so clearly there's some things I need to work on. Like having a camera that's closer to my head instead of the opposite side will probably help me keep things in frame a lot better. Because right now, it's, you know, my head is there. It's there. Right? Yeah, that's pointing exactly at my head. The camera's there. You can see the, the problem th 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 there? Just trying to figure out why Dank Pods just has his like literally sitting right in front of his face and he just looks down past it. It's almost like he used his brain before deciding to do something. And yes, this is very much impromptu. I literally just was like, oh, <coughs> I'm gonna do this by doing this, which was to get a little, little extension-y thingy so I could point my camera down. And that was the extent of the thought process. Like, yes, if I point the camera down, then everything will be perfect and <coughs> Everyone will be very interested to watch me do stuff off camera. Let's see, now the question is, ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so if I start from the front and work my way back to close, then I must start from the back and work my way front to open. Which does seem to be working rather well. I still need to do a little bit of bending here to get, get to clear the PCB. On this side, there we go. Okay, we cleared that side. So now, we keep working our way. Can we clear the rest of the case without breaking anything? There we go. Okay, we can't pull too far because our battery's still attached, but God, I just hate how thin those cables are. Logitech, use thicker cables. Jesus. We're just gonna... There we go. I think that'll be good. <coughs> okay. Assemblies disassembly in reverse. Right, that's how that phrase goes, isn't it? There we go. Get those buttons passed. Again, doing it all off camera because there's nothing more interesting than watching someone assemble something off screen, right? That's what people love. 
when things happen off screen. I'm just trying to shift this base plate forward uh, so that everything can sort of get into place. I think, oh, there we go, okay, I think, yeah, okay. That feels pretty okay. Okay, ooh, yeah, there we go. So you can kind of, like, there's little rails and tabs that sort of seat into place. There we go, that's pretty good. Okay, that feels a lot better. Okay, so again, assembly. We're gonna screw everything in so that everything sort of locks into place. And then we'll see how things are feeling. I might leave them a little bit loose because I sort of really aggressively bent them inwards and then softly bent them outwards. So I'm thinking that even if they're a little bit loose now, or if there's a little bit of play, I think they're going to be biased towards settling tighter rather than settling looser. So, and worst case scenario, I can always just crack this boy open and uh, fix again. Uh, the nice thing about the ceramic pads is um, I've found, like these guys here, these back ones have been removed like three, four, five times. They're still, like the adhesive is absolutely fine. As long as you're not like wiping your greasy face all over it, uh, it's gonna be fine to reuse. Um, and if you're really, really OCD about it, um, they do come with some extras. So um, I think, what was it, six? Yeah, six ceramic pads, they give you two extras. Um, you can do that, or honestly, I mean, it's a circle. You can cut a circle out of 3M double-sided tape. It's not that hard. I wouldn't even really call that DIY. That's just basic scissors, scissoring. Let's get this guy in place. These tiny little guys here. Again, not gonna go crazy with tightening. I don't want to break anything. Just gonna seat them in such that they, there you go feel like they're in. I think mostly they're just there to keep things from shifting around in the areas that you tend to grip. So this guy's actually trying to separate away from the, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Just make sure they're flush so that they don't catch on anything, but it feels good. I think I'll, once it settles in, I think I'll adjust the mouse click a little bit. Uh, the wheel is Definitely not dragging on anything, so that's good. It's got a nice feel to it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That do be a light boy. Okay, where where do I need to put my pads? Which mouse do I have? Uh, da, 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 da. They don't tell you where, uh, let me look up the stock photo where they put the pads. I do not remember. All right, S2. Show me. Get the picture at the bottom. Oh, we don't. Okay, we're using our <coughs> best guess here for skate location. I'm guessing front, front here and here, back here and here. I don't think anything else is possibly gonna need that. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, yeah, I'm... Like I said, I think these are gonna settle in uh, tighter rather than looser. So I'm, I'm happy to put the uh, ceramics on now and not be too worried about needing to take them off later. Like I said, if I really have to, I can just take them off. It's not the end of the world. So let's see, we grab four of these boys. And you know they're boys because they sit here and do very little and people praise them. Ha ha ha, topical. Okay. So I'm gonna use four. So let's grab we have the ones that aren't bent. This part I'm intentionally doing off screen because I'm doing a rather poor job of it. So let's. There we go. A little bit of dust from the screwdriver that I didn't clean. There we go. 
Just get them mostly centered. Not gonna be too OCD about these little patches of adhesive. I mean, it's just double-sided tape, so it's nothing crazy special or unique. As long as they're mostly centered, so that they're not gonna just stick onto hairs and crap. Don't like it, go away. You are not welcome here. There we go. Boy, peeling the other side of these little tabs is such a pain. Get them off the main paper is fine because you know this is giant piece of paper for you to hold on to. Getting the other side off is a pain in the booty. There it is. All right. Ah, oh, now the other side. <coughs> I apologize. I'm just gonna give up on getting this part in focus. This is just hard enough to do on its own, oh, much less. Try to focus the camera on it. I'm just gonna keep it. Here we go. Where we gonna do this? There we go. Okay. Garbage. Where are we going to put this? There we go. Towards the back. First one was relatively painless. Problem is, it tends to bring the adhesive up with it. Oh, there we go. Once you put them on, you can pretty much scoot them around a little bit here and there. And it doesn't need to be <coughs> absolutely perfect, because nothing in this world ever is. Oh my goodness. All right. So what I'm kind of doing is I'm kind of just picking an edge and sort of just folding it over, just letting it kind of fall over on. And then before I like press it down, I just kind of shift it into the position. Oops. The ideal position would be right about there, I think. There we go. You'll notice that if you do really like squeeze these, they will start actuating buttons and shifting and stuff. But I mean, look at it, it weighs nothing. Can't really fault it for that. Besides, you're no, never gonna be squeezing it from a position like that unless you're an absolute like Omega Chad gamer. In which case, just don't buy this mouse. Go, I don't know, go play Destiny with a dumbbell or something. I don't know. There we go. All right. Just like to give it a little like seat like that. There we go. Power on. Your nice blue light. Uh, and I need. Do I have the software on here? I don't know. Keep it on the screen. I do have G-Hub on here. Oh, it's almost like we planned this somehow. All right, so let's see. Just get all the kind of sharp things out of the way. Get you out of the way. All right, so we're gonna close those. It's hiding in the corner here. My mic's in the way. <clears throat> what the fuck is this? Mm, nope. Don't want that. So 
weird shit running on my computer. I don't know what Sonic Suite is, but I don't particularly care, and I don't want to see why I would need to run it start. But where are you? Status. Okay, we're good. Got it. Updated version. G304, technically. Okay, well, whatever. I don't really care what the specifics are. Uh, I run mine at 800 at all times, so I just drag all of their sensitivities off and hit set it at 800. Doesn't pull it's fine. This mouse exists for gaming. All the gaming. So uh, max pulling is okay. I do not remember off the top of my head what my keybinds are on this mouse. So let's see, where is the opponent software ultra custom? <clears throat> Let's see. Check for this. There. Now you can actually see what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm on the main screen here. Ish. You can ish see what I'm doing because it gets downscaled. Um, I am trying to remember what my four and five, which are the thumb buttons on the ultra symmetrical. So four is R. Uh, just gonna be a key. Find Ooh, that scroll does feel nice. I'm a fan of that. <coughs> I am a fan of that. All right, this guy I believe is T. Yes, I use T for reload. Don't judge me. Don't at me. Don't consider me. I'm just going to disable the center button because on this mouse, as you can see, ain't no center button for you to work with, uh, which is fine. I never once actually used it anyway. Um, I think I had it here bound to super, not once, not ever once have I used it. So I'm not heartbroken to, to have that go away. Um, yeah, that's, that's everything we need right there. Pretty straightforward. Um, I am going to, where is it? I'm going to tell it to store everything on the mouse, which is, here we go. All right, what was that? That was just desktop, right? Yeah, desktop default. And then store on the mouse, flash, desktop default. Now if we go down here, R R T T T T T. Fantastic. All right. There we go. We have built a um, you know, custom mouse. Um, very excited to put some time into this and see what it's like. Um, as you can see, shape wise, oh, here, we'll, uh, we'll go back to this screen here. So there we go. So as you can see, uh, shape-wise, um, very similar. Um, I'm actually gonna kill some of the cameras here. We don't need as much, <clears throat> some of the lighting rather. There we go, okay. This should make it a little easier to discern between the two shapes here. Now that's not just a washed out blast of white. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, very similar overall shape. Um, you know, Profile-wise, <coughs> nearly uh, identical in pretty much every way. Um, obviously, you'll have to put some. I'll have to put some time into it to know for sure. Um, but I think just the um, the reduced weight alone is probably going to go a long way. Cool transition, yo. Yeah, for this, this is much better. When I was fiddling around with all the little bits in, of black um, screws and stuff on the PCB, definitely the more aggressive lighting. Um, but yeah, now that we're got it all together, and you don't need to see the finite detail of a screw on the head of a thing. Um, but yeah, so. I'm uh, very, very pleased with this. Um, definitely, like I said, going to put some time into it. Um, yeah. Uh, scroll feels about the same. The Ponage, I think, is a little bit more resistant to scroll. But this one has some nice defined steps. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, thank you so much if you took the time to join me, either in the actual... Uh, live build, live build, or um, if you uh, watch this in the VOD after the fact, not sure when I'll have it edited or what it's going to look like, or even really where I'm going to post it at this point. But um, yeah, if you uh, enjoyed your time here, drop a like, uh, subscribe, always very helpful for a uh, tiny growing channel. So uh, very much appreciate your time as always. Have a lovely evening. Good night.